Hi, I'm Christy Waldrop, National Education Coordinator for Jatai International. Today we're going to be cutting a great, short, spunky haircut for Little Miss Rosie here. She has a great, edgy personality and fun, and we want to give her hair more of that same look. We want it to have a lot of versatility and fluidity through the hair. What we'll also do is remove a lot of this weight because her hair is perfect for razor cutting. Yes, it's very dense, however, she has a medium texture that will work really nicely with the razor once we go in and start removing the weight and add a lot of structured definition with the razor. We'll be left with a little bit richer tips on the end, giving it that nice edgy feel. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and get Miss Rosie shampooed and start the haircut. high point of the head, oh, the high point of the head here to the high point of the ear, and then we went from forehead to right at the occipital bone. We have made sure that we start at the high point of the occipital and bring it down to the ear base. We're going to start with a little bit of blade glide within this back section. Blade glide is a pharmaceutical grade cutting solution that allows for the hair to stay nice and moist as you're cutting. We're going to take a vertical subsection, nice and tight, not too wide. With the density of her hair, it doesn't need to be more than a half of an inch, if even that. We want this to be pretty tight, so I'm going to go in, and because this is graduation, we're going to move our wrist all the way down, cut directly down. If you see, I'm moving softly through with my wrist. We can see the graduation that has started. Still taking small half inch or less than half an inch subsection partings. Going in with the razor parallel to the hair shaft. I'm going to take this length off because I really one short, and that was extra length. We're cutting from shortest to long, so it allows for me to decide how short I want this, and we're gonna take it directly to her neck line. You can see all this little bit of extra hair that we have going, but what that's going to do, we're gonna remove that later with the nape and body razor once we get finished with this haircut. So it'll be a nice clean line. Has a nice movement. Through here, behind the ear, I'm gonna go in and just slightly remove that, cutting down. Pick and pull a little bit where I see some longer hairs that I want shorter. So what we're gonna do is move to the other side. I'm gonna take from shortest to longest again. It's always a great idea to work with the way the hair naturally falls. It's important to keep the hair good and damp. It's gotten nice and dry, so we're going to spray it again with the Blade Glide. I'm using the styling razor right now. Most of y'all know it as a black handle. However, I like our nice silver handle that we have as well. Through here, remember I took a little bit of length off over here. Doing the same thing on this side. We're going to clean up this area. Take that out with an ape and body here in a little while. Now we're going to take high subsections from just below the crown to this length. So we're going to cut from longest length to shortest length down. Then we're going to connect the two. Graduation is always when your fingers are moving. If we were layering, then our fingers would be more stationary. I'm going to go in. Nice soft wrist and movement with the razor because we don't want to have to go back and do a lot of personalizing on those ends as time goes on. 
We can see the cut shaping up really nicely. Still working off just below the crown on diagonals more as we get to the sides. Remember we're using pie subsections. We're moving to right above the top of the ear now. We're going to slightly over direct it. Take your length off and then we'll move to the next side. We're connecting these two areas just like before. Going through, razor is parallel to the hair. Still moving in a graduated cut. Once again, move the hair, look at it, see if you're liking it, loving it, actually. We're gonna shorten it a smidge more on this side. Still nice and damp, thanks to that pharmaceutical grade silicone in Blade Glide. Keeps the hair moisture longer. Picking and pulling, looking at it, feeling it, seeing what I want shorter and what I want longer. We're seeing a little bit of fun texture going on. We're able to move it, shape it however she wants to now. So now we're gonna move into the sides, right through here. What we're gonna do is over direct this slightly so that we maintain some of the length. I really wanna keep it somewhat short around the front of her face. If you'll notice, I've switched to RLX razor just to show you that the styling razor itself, the styling blades, can be interchanged into any of our razor handles. Continuously moving back, once again going in and graduating out, maintaining a little bit of length through here, and then we're going to over direct this again to that same area. If you like guides, this is a good way to use them. We're using a real soft wrist when we go in. If you notice, I'm never using my arm. I'm gonna go in. I want it a little shorter, right through here. We're gonna figure out what we're gonna do around the front of the face when we use the shears in a little bit. As we did on the other side, we're gonna over direct back and graduate down to remain or to maintain length in the front so that we can play with it at the end. We're gonna give her a nice fun fringe area that allows for her to have a lot of movement and shape and flexibility. All right, so now we're gonna to move to that top section. start with this top area that is still very long and very dense. We're going to connect it to the back and move into that front fringe area that we're going to have a lot of fun with. We're also going to do some structured definition and weight release through this area and make it really have that edgy, jagged feel that she'll have a lot of fun with. Again, no wider than your fingers. Moving up. Fingers are stationary, they do not move as we layer the hair. Last section. All right. We're looking at the way her hair naturally grows, which is directly this way. This looks very heavy. We see a lot of definition within the cut thanks to the razor because of that perfection within imperfection. However, I want to see more. So we're going to go in, I'm going to put the fine end of the comb in, pull out about 45 degrees. What you're going to find is that it's an imperfect subsection underneath. That is okay. What we're looking for is to give a little bit of definition and remove some weight. We're going to go in at the midsection of the hair lay the razor in parallel to the hair section and cut out a V like this. Then we're going to go in on the next side, same thing. I'm watching it, 
keeping it about 45 degree angle from the head. That way I can look and see what it does automatically. Now you can see more visual interest through here and it's taken out that weight without collapsing the style. She still has a lot of great volume, a lot of great fluidity and movement. We're gonna go ahead and do that throughout the head and give it some structure as well as a little bit more visual interest. On this side, her hair grows forward, just like most of us. We have our own individual hair print, just like our fingerprints, we have hair prints. Those hair prints have to be individualized and personalized for your specific client. Her hair grows this way, so we're gonna cut the way that it grows. And I'm just gonna take slices out. I'm gonna go with the way the hair naturally grows, push that back on diagonal. Just like when you're doing your hair color, we work off of diagonals to hide the lines. This will also hide the lines within your cut. that over the ear where it's heavy. More weight out. Around this front of the face, this fringe area we're going to do in just a few minutes when it's blown dry. However, right now we're going to comb this all forward. See how it's moving. This area still is a little bit heavy. So we're going to do just like we did on the other side. Look at the way the hair naturally falls. We want to allow for her to have a lot of flexibility of movement with this haircut. So we're gonna go in and remove weight in specific areas that don't mess with her natural hairline. We don't want it to be stringy. We don't want it to be overly shattered, but we wanna have some structure to it and visual interest. We're gonna go in and clean up this neckline area with the nape and body razor. The nape and body razor is state board legal in all 50 states. It doesn't look like it has a guard, but it has a very small guard. So you want to be very gentle and very careful with it. And we're going to lay it across the skin, just like we lay the razor parallel to the hair shaft. You lay this parallel to the skin. You let the blade do the work. No real pressure whatsoever. You can see it cleans up that area really nicely. We're going to go ahead and push this back and actually remove all of this right here. It's just kind of excess flyaway. No real reason for that area so it doesn't interfere with the haircut. It's going to clean everything up. It's important to always have this area damp and or wet. I personally prefer to saturate it because if you saturate it, there will be no razor burn. If you use it 45 degrees off the skin or straight on like this, you are going to cut your client. So we need to make sure that it's parallel to the skin and that there's a great smooth surface for it to cut on. I'm working, her hair naturally grows this way, so if you notice, I'm combing it that direction. I've already prepped it with the blade glide on this side. Once again, laying it directly on the skin. No pressure whatsoever, letting the fresh blade do the work for you. So we've worked our way from the left side of her head all the way around, cleaned up the nape of her neck. Now we're gonna go back in on this side. I felt a little bit more weight that I want removed, especially right through here. Still a little bit too heavy for my liking. So we're gonna go in, remove a little bit more weight. Very strong, heavy-handed. One more. that movement, visual, and then also tactile. 
You have to touch it, feel it, move it, see what it's going to do for the client. It has a lot of movement, a lot of shape. As a matter of fact, if she wanted to just let it dry naturally, she's got a lot of great natural bend and body and fluidity. And we've allowed for her curl to even pop up a little bit more that she may not have known that she had having longer hair and heavier hair before. After we blow dry, we'll personalize this very front area and then we'll be all finished and ready for the photo shoot. So we've got our all finished blow drying and what we did is we used a little bit of the set and style spray of Nicarojo's as well as one of his styling creams and it helped to give a nice polish and sheen to the hair. However, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to remove this area through here. To do that, her natural part starts about here. So I'm going to start her diagonal at that section. Don't want to mess with the blow dried section too much that I have. Tilt your head down please. However you can see it starts here and goes out to the high point of her eyebrow and then it goes down to the other high point of her eyebrow. Underneath that is where we're going to cut. this area right here. I'm going to use our switchblade shears. The blade literally can be removed and switched whenever you're ready to have a new set of shears and or you need um, to have your shears sharpened. There's no sharpening, just switching. And this is all underneath, so it's not going to be seen really within this haircut unless she wants it to be. All right, so now going into the main part of her fringe, take it this way. Remember I said at the high point of the eyebrow to the other high point of the eyebrow. We're going to pull all this forward. Now, we have almost a full straight line. However, we're going to give it more of a diagonal and a point at her chin that's going to help it to where she can flip it either way, no matter how she wants to um, style her hair. We're going to go in, diagonal, clip this back. Love our grip clips because they hold everything where they need to. I'm going to switch to our new Kaidens. These are amazing for any type of point cutting that we want to have done. They are as sharp as razor blades. The technology in which they are made is the same as our plier or straight razors. And they are the newest version of our switchblade shears. 
However, the other switchblade shears, as I'm sure you could tell, you can hear them. There's no bumper. There's no tension guard. And the finger holds are pretty much the exact same up and down. They're not offset really at all. However, we now have the Kaidens. The Kaidens have a tension. They also have a bumper here and an offset finger hold that we are all accustomed to now. They're also, in my opinion, better for point cutting because in our previous technology with the switchblade shears, we had a no-nip tip. And 20, 30 years ago when we were doing a lot of blunt cutting, it, that was wonderful. However, now we do a lot of point cutting. So unfortunately, we don't need a no-nip tip. We need to really have a nice sharp edge at the point of our shears. I like to have it straight across this way, and then she'll move it this way, and it creates a shorter to longer effect for that very first subsection. Now for this section on the other hand, we see her shortest and longest point. I go in deep one way and take it the opposite. Now we have more of a point. Once again, high point of the eyebrow. We're gonna go in off a little bit more of that corner, make it a little bit more precise, carving out, take out a little bit of that weight where it's shallow and at the eye, that's where we're going to remove the length. Moving it this way and cutting because it's very heavy. And then we're going to move it this way. The opposite direction, obviously, of how her hair grows. We'll go in. The whole time that I'm doing my carving, my shear is moving. Really liking what I see. We can see in this back area, lots of great movement, texture, if you will. Shows off the natural texture of the hair with the wave and the curl that she has. And I think it'll be a lot of fun and very, very fluid for her later on. What do you think, Miss Rosie? Has a lot of flexibility in this back area too. Flip it over, flip it around. You have a lot of different flexibility. Thank y'all so much for watching. This is Christy Waldrop with Jatai International. We'll see you next cut.